bad to the bone, bad to the bone. Y'all remember that song back in the day? I do. I don't know if that's the actual melody to it, but I do remember that song. Bad to the bone. Uh, I'm your boy DeAnthony coming back at you. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I just got through watching To the Bone. Starring Keanu Reeves and Lily Collins. So, what it's about is a bulimic or anorexic uh, that is struggling with eating. Uh, she actually ends up meeting Keanu Reeves and, you know, they take her to a, um, kind of like a, I don't want to say a halfway house, but uh, let's just say rehab uh, and, you know, try to correct her behavior or try to get over that type of struggle. Um, so this is something that is... Um, might be a little sensitive. Now, I do want to say that just bear with me. Just roll with me. We can just have a conversation. I can only look at this through the lens that I have. Uh, I don't mean to offend anybody. If I do, it's just kind of how I see the world, or at least maybe uh, America. Um, so just bear with me. Just go for this ride. If you did see it and, you know, you didn't mind Keanu Reeves, I'm probably going to be about on the same uh, wavelength as that. Uh, a little, little, maybe a little above it, but pretty much on the same uh, mind mindset. Uh, because, honestly, I mean, I didn't, you know, I'm a, I mean, I might be slim, no, but I didn't really grow up with those type of that type of issue. I grew up where we didn't know what we were gonna eat the next day, you know, um, not every day, but it did happen. Um, so I just come from a different world. Uh, but first off, I do want to say that I do appreciate the story because I think that some of these things do need to get out there. Maybe it will change the mindset of America, of society, of entertainment. Uh, because I do think that though I don't necessarily empathize, um, I do understand there is an issue and I do understand that it is, it does stem from other entities pretty much making everyone or trying to make everyone, um, self-conscious of how they look and feel bad about how they look and, I do think these type of stories need to come out because that's inappropriate um, to try to make people feel bad for just enjoying life, you know. So uh, everyone's not built the same. Everyone is, uh, everyone's different. Everyone's body is different. You know, we're not all, especially, <laughs> we're not all meant to be size one. That's just, uh, that's just not the case for, for one uh, and two. Um, as adults, we should not be trying to aim for size one. Um, that's just me personally. Size one is what a five-year-old, uh, five to ten-year-old would be. Um, we're adults. We should have mature bodies. Nothing wrong with a mature body. Now, as a black man, I do like my women with curves. That is, that is the lens that I'm coming from because most black men like women with curves. Um... It's apparent, you can see it out in the society today. Everyone's getting fake booty this and fake booty that. So, that's the lens that I'm coming from. We are adults, we should look like adults. Um, but let's just get started. I just wanted to do a disclaimer, okay? Right, here we go. It's pretty much is about a bulimic girl, how she's struggling with her issue and how her family is dealing with it and try, trying to live uh you know, and support her as well. Her mom doesn't want her. Her dad is ashamed. And the only person that seemed to give a shit about this this young lady, because she's 20, she's 20 years old. And this is not a, a, a kid. So this is why I'm kind of going to be a little harsh here. Uh, she is 20. and But the only person that seems to give a shit about this young lady is the stepmom, which is surprisingly uh, refreshing actually, uh, because we all always grew up, or I guess watching TV, this, you know, step parents don't really give a shit about the kids, you know, so, um, the only one that seems to really give a shit, uh, starting out is a stepmom, but she ain't playing though, she's like, yo, you need to get your shit together, 
or hit the road. What, what you want to do? What you want to do? So the girl, uh, Ellen, is is the the, the character's name. Uh, Ellen starts off a little mean we, when she first gets into the, her first scene. Um, there's this little there's this other young lady that is talking about these articles in the magazine. How they have you know this this delicious piece of cake right here. They got this uh, model on the, on the next page, and they got this health thing uh, about living healthy uh, on the next one. And she's like, well, what about the goddamn cake? Why are they doing that? It's, it's society's fault that I'm like this. And Ellen is like, oh, blame society. It's all their fault. Let's kill them all. And it makes the girl feel like she's crazy or uh, it just kind of dismisses you know, her thought process of why she is the way she is. And honestly, I agree with her to a point. There is personal or there's primary responsibility, which would go on the big institutions that are making the individual feel bad. And then there's secondary uh, responsibility, which is yourself, because you ultimately make your own choices. So I do agree that it is because of magazines like that, that actually uh, force people to want to feel bad about who they are and how they look. And, and to a degree where they just don't care about their own selves, their lives. You know, so I do agree with that. So she did start off a little mean. I didn't like that too much, but, you know, it's kind of building her character, you know. So she gets kicked out of uh, one rehab to go to another rehab uh, that her stepmom hooked her up with and she ends up meeting Keanu Reeves uh his doctor I forget the, the name but I'm gonna just call him Keanu okay um and he is more of a feature than a star he's not really in it mostly uh you know he's only in a few scenes uh he's more of a feature uh character you know so don't think that he's gonna be in this the whole time and they're not going back and forth in dialogue the whole time He's in it in a few scenes just to kind of give support to the other cast, you know, kind of like making the story interesting. You know, we got to put it, got to put a big name on it for people to care about. That's kind of what it was like. Now, though I agree with, with Keanu's character in here, his his approach to things, um, I felt like he was a little unrealistic to me uh, just because he is not, you know, your kind of mainstream um, you know, zeitgeist or, you know, mindset, you know, he doesn't really follow the norm of what society is deemed acceptable, let's say that, um, which is not impossible, but to be this well-known doctor that everyone recommends and it's hard to get him, I think that he would go along more with society's viewpoints and he just doesn't. You know, he's, uh, he is a therapist, but he is not there to shrink you. You know, he's like, it's your choices. Do you want to live? If you don't want to help yourself, get the hell out of my office. You know, it's, it's your life. Only you can live it. Grow a pair. To me, I get it. That is how I feel. You know, there are some things in life that aren't your fault. But there are a lot of things that you can actually change a lot of things you can actually make better for yourself not everything because life is difficult at least for me anyway uh but life can be difficult that's just life you know so i agree with him but i think his demographic is let's just call him upper class uh to not offend anybody upper class and they would probably you know give him get his license taken away to practice because he might offend one of these upper class women with uh, some harsh words or his harsh words could have killed a young lady and they would have blamed him for it. So I don't think that it was too realistic, but it, it, it did, I will say that it did give some type of, it made the story more interesting, let's say that, uh, because he wasn't your typical therapist. You know, he's like, oh, so he's, he's a little refreshing. He didn't say the normal things that someone would say. But I just felt it was a little bit unrealistic. But anyway, so as you can probably tell by now, 
I'm a black man and I grew up in the inner city, so I'm not really too moved by this type of story. And, you know, it's sad that the mentality is, you know, sick, but how we got here to me, especially as an adult, I'm not moved by it. I'm more like Keanu. Grow a pair. You know what I'm saying? You're not 15 years old anymore. You're a grown woman. You're an adult. It's time to just love who you are. Or now you have power to actually change it. Change it. It, it, it. It's that simple. We're not talking about a 15-year-old girl. I wouldn't be making this type of video if, it was, if that was the case. We're talking about the, an adult, 20 years old. Still young, but 20 years old. And I definitely understand that it's hard to kick an addiction. I get it. I, I understand that. I'm not trying to be, um, you know, insensitive about that. I'm not trying to say, like, I'm, you should be able to do anything that you want. Like, you know, sometimes things are just a struggle. You know, like, nothing should affect you. I'm not trying to be like that. But I do think at some point you need to grow up. And that's my real issue with, with this type of, um, I'm going to just say, first world problem because... We're the only, the only like country, one of the only countries that can, we can hunt on a full stomach and we can be vegetarians for political reasons and we can decide that eating is just bad for us to where we're going to throw it up all the time. You know, these, this is, these are first world problems and I really would like uh, most people to you guys, why you gotta travel? You gotta travel. I would like most people to go to third world countries, or if you don't want to do that, go to some downtown area that you got uh, somewhere near you. Most places have a downtown area. They probably got homeless, and go volunteer. See how they actually live day to day. See their struggles. You know what I'm saying? You need to see other people's struggles so you can understand your own blessings. We live in America, man. I have so many things I can complain about as a black person. I just so many for 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 hundreds of years I can complain about things that we had to go through and today. But I understand that at some point I have to make my own moves, my own decisions. I have to become who I want to be. You know what I'm saying? I just can't. I, I'm just not gonna sit around complaining all day. I'm just not gonna just not do nothing because systematically I've been shunned. That's not gonna happen. It'll be harder for me, but I'm going. I'm gonna try. So, the, these type of issues can really be, I feel like, avoided if we just stop living on top of the hill, worried about uh, what the Joneses are doing. You know, looking on the other side of the fence, see if the grass is greener. If we can just love who we are, and we can just appreciate who we are and where we are. We don't have to even deal with these type of things. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is a, a to me a problem from that stems from not being able to see your own blessings and 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 all the opportunities that you have because um, you you worried about oh I don't look like her I don't like I don't look like, I don't look like this girl in this magazine I don't look like the girl on the cheerleading squad you know I don't look like this movie star. Man, bump all that, man. These are people you ain't probably never going to meet. They don't even care about you. Stop caring about them so much. Live your life, man. Be you. And honestly, if I'm really going to talk about it and get deeper into it, because I, I, I get a little deep, this whole wanting, as a, as a man, wanting your woman to be a size one and two, to me, that's kind of borderline pedophilia. Your woman shouldn't be shouldn't be looking like how your daughter looks from five to ten. That's not the look you should be going for. If that's the type of women you like to see, there is a problem, and we do have a problem of pedophilia in America. I like my woman to be mature. I shouldn't be wondering, you know, is she ten or is she twenty. I should not be wondering that. I should be like, all right, that's a mature woman right there. That's what I like to see. All this, you know, 
uh, size one, two, ribs all showing and stuff. That's whack, man. Like, I, I don't understand it. And that's just not how my culture is. You know, we like curvy women. You know, so it, it shows, it's a sign of maturity, sign of being healthy. And, you know, now nothing wrong with being in shape. Nothing wrong with, you know, being slim. But uh, you should be looking like an adult. So that that's a real, that's the real, to me, the root of it is some pedophilia stuff for for men. And it, women just, you know, women want to be liked by men. So, hey, they do what they got to do. But honestly, we should be looking healthy. And as a man, you should want a woman that looks mature. But I digress, okay? I want y'all to just roll with me. We're just talking. We're just having a conversation. You know, I'm sorry I'm offending anybody. I'm sorry you like a number one. Uh, but there's there's an issue there. I'm just saying, this is just how I see it. So just roll with me. So back to the actual movie. I think they have a good uh, cast. They have a good variety of characters. Um, so you get to the, re the rehab house and there's a lot of different types of people dealing with food disorders. They have a big girl, a fat girl, or whatever I'm supposed to say today, okay? Uh... <laughs> They had a, a overweight girl, let's say that. Um, they had kind of like a crazy girl. You know, she was like all into ponies and things like that. They had a nerdy girl that, you know, seemed like she had her life together, but secretly she was throwing up in bags and putting it underneath her bed. Uh, they had a guy that, you know, he was in, like, he was into ballet. He was into dancing, I guess. Um, and he was a, a, a musical soul. So they had a good mixture of people that you could actually relate to if you have issues with eating. You know, so I, I, I did appreciate that. That was really good to see a, a variety of people who are struggling, you know, because maybe you're not as severe as this one or, you know, you you think you got it all together, but you really don't. You know, so it was, it was a good variety of, of characters in dealing with their own issues. But the real messed up part is they had a pregnant girl that was dealing with eating. And man, she ended up having a miscarriage and it was blood everywhere and everyone saw it. And it was a very disturbing scene. I mean, it wasn't all gruesome. I mean, let me not say that. Maybe I'm putting doves on it. But I'm saying like, if I can imagine how I would feel if I walked in knowing that this girl has you know, a disorder, but she's, you know, she got a baby she got to eat for, and she didn't eat enough, and the baby ended up dying. Like, that's a disturbing scene. You know, like, oh, snap. Like, to me, I don't know, man. I'm just different when there's thresholds that, you know, I come to in life or just in a day-to-day -day to where, okay, I can't do it anymore. No Something got to change. You know, like, I'm not a... a, a squeaky clean person but there's a threshold okay now it's time to clean up the show you know it's like that's how i am so when i'm looking when i'm looking at that scene i'm like okay something gotta change you know so that's how that's how it feels so that's what i'm saying it was a disturbing scene uh, just imagining what it would be like you know so ellen meets this guy and she starts to fall for him you know and she starts to kind of want to kind of live life you know what i'm saying like live for herself now that she found someone who actually loves her or cares about her Something like that, you know, and it was kind of cool to see her kind of like liven up a little bit and actually go out and attempt to eat. It was crazy because um, what she all she pretty much did was she just chewed the food and then spit it out. I'm like, wow, just one more step, though. One more step and you'll be there, you know, just just swallow it. <laughs> no, but <laughs> um, it was really interesting to see. I didn't know that that was something that. You know, they actually did. So it, it's a, it's good that they have this type of movie because there are issues in America that should be talked about and should be addressed and shouldn't be afraid to be on the screen. So I do appreciate Netflix for that. This is a Netflix, I forgot to say, this is a Netflix uh, uh, production or Netflix original or whatever. Um, so I appreciate Netflix. Netflix, is they, they do a lot of original stories that you probably wouldn't ever see. So I do appreciate that. So then, of course, it gets all messed up because he asks her if she's a virgin, and she's like, uh, yeah, and he's like, well, you should do it to me or whatever, and, you know, they start to kind of like, you know, hump each other a little bit, and he says, you know, 
uh, he ends up messing up and saying, I love you. And she's like, what? What? Get off me. You know, and it kind of messes with the whole dynamic of their relationship, you know, because she just feels like she doesn't deserve for someone to love her. Or, let me not be assuming, or she feels like there's no point of loving because he's in, he's going to just leave anyway. He's going to break her heart, leave her somehow, you know, so she's like, there's no point of actually loving and I, and I understand that, you know, because this world is kind of scary and stuff does happen, you know, so I get it. But the reason why he says I love you is because apparently she was this famous artist or maybe Instagram famous, you know what I'm saying? Like a few thousand people knew her. Uh, she was an Instagram uh, famous artist and, you know, she had drew uh, a, had, had drawn. She drew a drawing. Hmm. But she ended up having this drawing. She posted a drawing. And I guess it was very morbid. And it gave this young lady the courage. I don't know if I'm going to call it cut a break. But the the nerve to kill herself. And, you know, it, it, she left a, a, a note to Ellen saying, you're the reason why I ended up killing myself. You know, so... People knew her, so he already knew her. So he's like, I've known you for two years before you even got here. So that's why I love you. You know, and she just didn't understand that. Like, she, don't, she, you don't know me, and I don't know you, so just stop with all this lovey-dovey stuff. Now, as an artist, this is just a question. If someone killed themselves over a drawing that you drew, would you stop being, would you stop drawing? That's deep, yo. Like... That's deep. It's a lot of responsibility. Like Spider-Man. With power comes a lot of responsibility. I don't know. I might have to ask C-Jack that. Hmm. That's my other uh, colleague. He He's an artist. So he does the uh, Break Through Bliss with me. I'm going to see what he would think. Hmm. I don't know. So, after the whole miscarriage thing, uh, she ends up wanting to leave. She doesn't have one to do anything with him. You know, we had the miscarriage thing. It's just too much. So she ends up leaving. She ends up going to her mom's house. And uh, her mom was gay, by the way. And one thing I did like about this movie is that they had real conversations. They brought up real life type of scenarios. I know that in the media, we're not supposed to say certain things. If if uh, we're not, you know, supposed to look at homosexuality in a certain way. It should all just be wonderful. Um, but some people don't have those beliefs. So... They ask a question, like, do you think that your mom being gay all of a sudden, because it wasn't, you know, her whole life, it was, she was 13 when her mom became a lesbian, and she, and the, the question arose, could this have been a reason that she felt like she didn't want to live life? Like, she's already going through puberty, and all of a sudden, she got, a, you know, worried about this type of stuff. I don't know. I didn't grow up like that. But to me, it's a valid question. But I think it would be shunned with, you know, the way society is. To me, it's a valid question. Nothing wrong with having this conversation. You know, not blaming anything. It just came up in conversation. Do you think this could be a reason? You know, and it could be. You know, because like I said, she didn't grow up with it. Some people grow up since they were, you know, two or three years old with, you know, two moms or two dads. She had a mom and a dad that were married, and all of a sudden, boom! Mom, I got two moms now? I got, what's, what's, what's happening? You know, so, I don't know. I feel like that would be disturbing to me, you know, to be abruptly just, like, sh this shoved in my face. Just think how the, uh, think how Bruce Jenner's family might feel. They knew they dad for, like, 30 years. And all of a sudden, you gotta call them, this dude, Caitlyn? What? That's weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not used to that. What's going on? So, I feel like it was a valid point. So, I do appreciate the real conversation that they had. We're not doing this politically correct. We're not doing this overly sensitive thing. It's, it's a real conversation. I get it. I appreciate it. So, anyway, she goes to her mom's. And her mom is, you know, she takes her in. And she's like, you know what? If this is what you want to do, if you want to just die... And give up your life. I accept it. I'm not going to fight you no more. Because I can't fight it. I have to just accept that whatever is in your mind right now is where we're going. Of course, she's crying. 
She's not she's not like upset or she's not like all abrupt like me. But she's crying about it, you know, because that's her daughter. And she's done everything she could. You know, and for some reason, this young lady don't want to live life. I don't get it. Makes no sense to me. Once we're, you know, once my life is being affected, it's time to it's time to change. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, so I know I look slim. But I'm a, I'm a husky guy. But if I couldn't sleep because of it, you know, if, I don't know, something was wrong. Or let's say, uh, I don't know, I was on drugs. And my teeth started turning yellow. You see how white my teeth is? If these mugs was yellow or falling out, we're done. We're done with that drug. Because that, it, I, to me, that's a threshold. We're Got to cut it out. You know, because I can't be... Came looking all jacked up, so I don't. I don't personally get it. I know that addiction is a is a problem and it's hard to get over, but there's just some things that just if it's messing with the quality of my life, I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? I just can't. I just can't do it. I'm sorry. But anyway, so <laughs> she's at her mom's house, and her mom says that this lady that you know helped her through a, another tough situation said that it would be therapeutic, therapeutic, if I feed you. Now, that sounds right there, you know, with just that statement, don't sound that bad. And I'm like, you know what, that could be. You know, maybe having your mom, the mama bird, feeding the baby bird. You know, hey baby bird, you know, feeding the baby bird. Ah, that sounds reasonable, right? She pulls out the baby bottle. I'm like, the baby bottle? What? <laughs> like, mom, I'm not about to drink out of no baby bottle. So she she puts her on her lap, puts her Ellen on her lap, and leans her back and commences to feeding the bottle to her. Now, she ended up saying that I felt like I wasn't affectionate enough with you as a kid, as a baby. And this is the reason why you're like this. If I'd have been more affectionate with you, maybe you wouldn't be like this. And you know what? I agree. Affection for a kid, very important. I'm very affectionate with my son. You know, he knows that his dad loves him. Uh, but I think that you should just start being more affectionate today. There's no need for me to reenact when I was an infant. That's weird. That's just more of a, a traumatizing experience. I'm not about to lay back and get... Maybe it's just me. I don't know. That was just a little weird. I mean, nothing wrong with feeding a baby bird. But it needs to be kind of like metaphoric. You know, it, it, it can't be, like, realistic where the, the mama bird is throwing up in the baby bird mouth. We're not, we're, not, we're not doing that. But you can feed me. I'll chew it. But maybe, you know what? Maybe she couldn't. She knew she wouldn't eat, like, real food. You know, so just picking up a spoon and putting it in her mouth would, wouldn't, have been, wouldn't have worked. But there's soup. I don't know. There's soup. Soup can be fed. You know, that's not solid. I don't know, but being a baby, pretending I'm a baby and whatever, it's just weird. I don't know, but that's just me. So, at the end of all that, that night, uh, Ellen, she goes running, which is, you know, to burn calories, even though she don't need to burn no more calories. But that's like a thing, you know, I gotta burn, 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 burn. Man, I wish I could run that much, because I need to burn some calories my damn self. But, so she goes on this run, and she ends up passing out. And um, this is her breaking point, pretty much. And this is where, to me, a lot of movies, because we're towards the end, a lot of movies cannot finish a story. And I feel like a, a, a story as important as this is, even though I'm kind of like dismissing it, it's still important. So even with a movie that is this important, you really need to hit home. You need to bring it in. And a, lot, and a lot of movies, including this one, just don't know how to bring it home. You know what I'm saying? So this is her. She she, you know, she has an hallucin hallucination. 
Um, she pretty much thinks that she's about to die and she just like accepts it. Uh, so then she uh, actually, instead of dying, she gets into this <clears throat> um, out of body experience. You know, and she ends up, you know, talking to her, her boyfriend, the boy that likes her. Um, she ends up, and then she ends up seeing herself, and she seeing herself, and she's like, "Oh, that's what I look like." Oh man! And she has this epiphany to where she wants to get better. So then she gets back into her body, and uh, she ends up going back to her dad's house and just giving her stepmom a huge hug. And curtains. Curtains. You see how that's whack? You see how if I would have ended that and the video would have been over, the shit would have been whack? That's what the movie was like. You needed to see her actually progress because she said this before. She said, I'm going to be better. She said, I'm going to make a change. She said, I'm going to make an effort. She's done that before. So to do, to end on that... What does that say? That leaves it open. She could she could have died for all we know. You know what I'm saying? Just because the intent was there, just because the potential was there, doesn't mean she followed through. You have to follow through with these things to give people hope. They have to see it. They a lot of people haven't ever seen it. They've heard people talk all the time. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I got a dream to do that. I got a plan to do that. But everyone everyone doesn't always follow through. It's inspiring to see people follow through. And you can you can say, hey, every ending don't have to end the same. Every ending shouldn't be happy. I get it. I understand that. But this is not, to, to me, you are addressing an issue that needs to be rectified. You care enough about the issue. You want it to be, you want it to change, right? So if you want it to change, we need to see that change. Just talking about it, that's nothing. You know, we hear that all the time. And that's to me, that's a rule in movie, in 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 uh in cinema. Don't tell me about it. Show me. Don't tell me how you got in trouble all, all your life. Show me. Let me be able to empathize with you. Let me be able to understand. Let me see what your world was like. Don't just tell me, because then I don't have that type of connection. So with this type of movie, being that it's an, it's an issue that is it means a lot to people, you need to end on a strong note. Just ending on potential, ending on, you know, good words, that's nothing. So that's just my review. That's how I felt about it. It does need to be addressed. I know that it is an issue. It shouldn't be an issue. There is a bigger uh, um, a bigger issue as far as like media pushing this type of stuff. And I get it and I, and I agree that we need to start changing what is beauty. You know, beauty is not the same thing. You know, it's not, you know, cookie cutter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just not healthy for society to be pushed these images of these perfect women. And a lot of that's photoshopped. You know, a lot of that, you know, either is genetics. A lot of that is, you know, they just run every day. You know, a lot of that is they might be throwing up. You should look that good in a magazine or on TV. You know what I'm saying? Like, who wants to go through that? Those people should not... People on TV and magazines should not be your role models. Period. But if that's never taught, if the parents never teach you that, like, if... If, if as a parent, if, you're, if you are not your son or daughter's biggest influence or the role model you're doing something wrong period you're leaving the world to raise your kids and that's just not going to be healthy because all they care about is that dollar that bottom line so please parents teach your kids tell them that they're, they're smart tell them that they're beautiful tell them that they're precious tell them that they're capable tell them that they're able tell them that they're great Tell them that they're awesome. Just do it. Even if they mess up. It's okay. Because honestly, the people who get back up are the best. To me, they end up actually achieving more than people who just have talent. People who get back up and try again, those are the ones you want. Those people are going to be reliable. You know, so teach that. And we really need to 
I, I would say focus on kids. In this society, we're so focused on money and careers. We need to really focus on kids because this society is becoming a very dysfunctional one. You know, and maybe you don't see it because you live on this high horse. You know, and I'm just this little little black guy looking up and I can see the world for what it is. You know, there is a problem. You know, and honest, obviously it is. That's why they made this movie. You know, so let's address it. Let's actually do something about it. Don't just watch it and move on to the next. You know what I'm saying? Because there is a problem. I might not be so attached to this issue, but I know it shouldn't be an issue. And the fact that it is means that something needs to change. So, all right, guys. Um, thanks for, for listening. Thanks. If you got to the end, I appreciate you that going for this ride with me. If there's anything you want to talk about, go ahead and comment. I would definitely reply back. I have no problems with that. And if I, you know, made you all frowned up through the whole video, I apologize. You know, I'm just, I don't live underneath society's compass. Like, I have my own compass. I have my own meter. I don't really sway with what's going on with the media or with entertainment. You know, I, I, I know as we talk about nothing but movies, but I actually think a little deeper than most people. But anyway, thank you for rolling with me. What do you guys think about my, my new display case here on my pops? I love it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So go ahead and check out our other videos here, guys. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I want to know what you guys think. Am I just being insensitive? Or, you know, should I really have connected with this? I mean, it was a decent movie. If I had to rate it, I would definitely give it about a three out of five stars. So, all right, guys. I'm your boy, DeAnthony, and I'm out. Peace.